Chapter 12 is a cell cycle. Cell cycle is my, uh, mitosis. And remember, these are somatic cells. And I said somatic cells are which cells? Every cell except gametes. Yeah, good. So, uh, biology teacher used to be here. Used to say from my head to mitosis. <laughs> all right, so all the cells from my head to my toes are through mitosis. And this actually is the steps of mitosis going through the entire thing. This is like, I think, the first picture on your book. Um, and basically, you notice that this is the DNA. The DNA has to condense down and to form with chromosomes. Those chromosomes actually then end up replicating and joining and then splitting, and then we have two new cells. Okay, so that's basically the entire cell cycle right there. Okay, we're done. Okay. So how does this work? Well, first off, let's look at the prokaryotes. Remember, prokaryotes do not have what? Nucleus, or they don't have... Other cell parts, yeah, organelles. And also their, their ribosomes, um, the ribosomes are always free. They, they're not attached. Okay, so those main three things. And so because prokaryotes don't have a nucleus, their DNA is in what's called a nuclear region. And so the, the chromosomes themselves are really easy, or the DNA itself is really easy to, to replicate and to push in between one another. So essentially what you've got is you've got this, this cell here, okay, this prokaryotic cell, some form of bacteria or something. Um, and really what it has to do is just pinch off on one side, pinch off on the other, elongate, and it has two cells. That's the reason why, like, if you um, don't clean a tabletop really well, and then, like, two minutes later, you had one bacteria, now you've got four, because it replicates every minute. And so you have to, like, clean all the way. That's the reason why they're like, oh, you almost killed all the bacteria, but it's not all gone. Well, you come back, and it's gonna, they're going to be tons more. So. Um, but the good thing is, though, is that because bacteria do replicate through binary fission, um, if you need, say, a growth of bacteria, say if it's doing something like producing insulin for you, or if you're doing a study in a test, um, you can do that test really quickly. All right, so I got a question. Hmm? So, uh, so that's binary fission. Again, this specifically occurs with prokaryotes. Um, do you know that fission means to split? So, um, and it splits into two. Okay, so, like nuclear, like nuclear fission, yeah, nuclear fission is where the uh, helium splits into two hydrogen, or the uranium-234 splits into two krypton and something else. I forgot what the other one is. Um, but anyways, yeah, so fission means to split. That's why there's two S's. This is what I always remember. Fission is split because you can split between the two S's. Fusion means it's actually already been joined, so there's only one S. All right, uh, vocab cells. Uh, so somatic, we've already talked about it going from your head to your toes. Uh, gamete is a what? Sex cell. Sex cell. Diploid. <laughs> diploid, you're such a diploid. Um, no, diploid is, what, what's the root word here? You see, oop, oh, back. Die. Not die as in you're dead, but die as in? Two. two. So how many chromosomes do you think there are? Two. Two, yeah. So diploid would mean two chromosomes. Haploid means? One. So whenever I use the term um, 2N, oh, that's black. You can't see black on black. So 2N is diploid, and then 1N would be, then be haploid. Okay. Because it's half a 2. Right. And so when you go through mitosis, you always want to have a diploid cell. When you go through meiosis, you're going to end up with haploid cells. Okay, the centromere is this part right here. It's a little pinch part area. And that's where the two sister chromatids actually join together. Okay. So whenever we talk chromosome, um, remember, it's, it's this. That's one chromosome. But most of the time you'll see it like this. All right? That's basically, those are sister chromatids, okay? That's the doubled version. So when you look at a karyotype, which we're going to... No. When we look at meiosis, we'll look at karyotypes. Um, the karyotypes have all the doubled chromosomes. The genome. The genome is your all your genes, in one long line. Oh. Yeah. It's like you. It's your your like recipe. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So a cell cycle. Cell cycle. Most of the point is in interphase. If you look right here, this little map. Look how much is interphase. All that. About ninety percent of your cell cycle, and this is basically how your cell normally appears. Um, about 90% of the time, it's an interface. Okay? Um, this G0 phase right here is basically the growth phase. It's essentially not really growing. It's more like a homeostasis phase. It's just maintaining itself. 
Okay, but the moment that it goes into this G1 phase, when it's getting ready to divide, G1 phase basically means that the cell itself is growing. Okay, so when, when the cell basically is getting bigger, cell membrane is stretching out, it might be increasing the amount of cytoplasm. Um, but for the most part, it's just getting bigger. The, same, the organelles are basically the same. The, D, the amount of DNA is the same. Um, Everything is the same except for basically we're moving into a bigger house. Okay, and then the S phase... It says right here, DNA synthesis, S for synthesis. This is where the DNA is basically starting to replicate itself. It's starting to grow, starting to get longer, starting to actually cause two new strings of DNA. Because again, we're, we're getting to the point where we want to get a mitosis. We're going to split these cells apart. So G1 is just overall growth, S phase of synthesis. And then G2 is where the organelles themselves start to grow. So you start adding the number of mitochondria. You start increasing how many vacuoles you have. You start increasing how many lysosomes. Um, you start, um, uh, start increasing the number, if it's a plant cell, chloroplast. Okay? So basically there's two growth phases. Uh, G1 is where it's basically getting bigger, and then G2 is where all the other things are getting, like uh, they're increasing in number. And then pretty much the last, uh, about 10 to 15% is right here, the mitotic phase. So you go through mitosis. And then cytokinesis just basically means the cytoplasm is separated out into two cells. Okay. So here are the steps of mitosis. Mitosis starts off with prophase. And if you notice from the, remember from the video, the, the Baylor video, um, you had the guys in black and you had the guys in, in white. And then there was people that were in uh, blue and red, and then you also had little yellow people, right? Well, basically, here's what this setup is. The guys in black were the cell membrane. The guys in white were the nucleus, were the nuclear membrane. The red and blue guys were what? DNA. The DNA of the chromosomes, right? And then the guys in yellow were called centrioles. And what did the guys in yellow do? You remember? Grab yeah, they grab the red and blue guys and pull the back. So, if you noticed, what happened to the guys in the white? About first, like, third of the movie. Yeah, they disappeared. That's what this is. The nucleus disappears, okay, and the nuclear envelope disappears as well. So, remember, we're gonna, we're have to, we have to take all this DNA, all these, the, the chromosomes themselves, and replicate them, and then cause them to split into two. So, if we have a nuclear envelope here, if we have a nucleus, it's not going to be able to do that. These are mitotic spindles. If you look really closely up here on the screen, I don't know if you can see it very well in your picture, but these little thin lines right here, these are mitotic spindles. These are basically little fibers that basically help the chromosomes themselves to kind of move around where they need to go. Looks like one of those, like, geo rock things. Yeah, right the, yeah, the geos. So this is actually is a cell going through this prophase. So this is called prophase. And the main thing here is that the, the chromatins condense. What that means is basically... When it's in its growth phase, when it's in its G1 or S or whatever, the, the DNA itself is kind of all over the place. But the chromosomes will then basically come back themselves down. Because you take a standard like human genome, it's super, super long. Right? But it has to fit into our millions of cells. Well, the way it does that is it basically wraps itself around um, uh, things called histones, which are proteins. And those histones basically bundle all together. So it's, it's what they call a ball and string. Um, example. They're basically the ball of the histones, and you take string and wrap it around that ball. And you take all the balls and you shrink them all together. So you have this really long DNA, but since it's all being wrapped around one ball, which is then stuck to another ball, it's wrapped around another ball, and then that's all joined together in one long string, that's how you, how you end up with getting condensed chromosomes. The next one is metaphase. Meta means what? What do you think? Sometimes it means change, but I was looking more for where's that, where are they lining up? In the middle. In the middle. So I always see metal as meta as middle. Okay, here, so here's a plant cell. Here's an animal cell. Um, and they lie along what's called the metaphase plate. This is where cleavage is going to occur, as well as the cell plate is going to be formed. So cleavage occurs in animals, and cell plates form on plants. Wait, what was that second part after the cleavage? So metaphase doesn't take very long at all. It just kind of, again, these, these, um, these mitotic spindles actually move every, all the chromosomes around to the right place. 
Next one's the antiphase. This is where in the video where the guys grabbed him by the yellow by the yellow guys grabbed him by the belt and they went like this and they like went back like in that V form. It truly does do this V form. Because what they're doing is basically whenever you have these chromosomes and they've been replicated, they've been doubled over, they the myotic spindles will come along and attach right here. Okay, and they're they're being pulled back this way. So what happens is basically it truly these these little ends basically bend inwards, and that's why it has this kind of looking shape to it. Okay, so they end up moving to opposite poles, and what you have is on the end of these that's where the uh, centrioles are. And the centrioles are where the mitotic spindles are attached. Now the last one is telophase before you get to cytokinesis. Um, telophase is just whenever it separates out. When the nuclei start, start to reappear, uh, the membranes themselves, the white people, will then come back around to join those new chromosomes. The white people come back. Uh, and then the black people separate out during the Cupid shot. Does that sound weird? Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah, no, the nuclear membrane basically comes back in, it reforms itself to, to continue around the, the uh, DNA, and then the, if you look right here, this is what we would call a cleavage spot, right there, okay? And then again, this is that cell plate. So basically, this is the cell membrane pinching off, and you notice during the, the cubit shuffle that they, they kind of joined hands, they went in, but eventually these two people broke and these two people broke. And this cell membrane came around to this side, and that cell membrane came around to that side. So you get two exact copies or daughter cells. Now I'm going to show you a little video real quick. These are the, the mitotic spindles. Um, now, there are two different types. Don't really focus too much on them, but basically they're, they're pretty simple. Th th this kinetic core um, are the microtubules and the proteins, or sorry, the microtubular part of the mitotic spindle, okay? Um, and so remember, microtubules are basically things that are in the, chrom uh, in the chloroplast, not chloroplast, sorry, cytoplasm, um, to help with kind of directing traffic, okay? And so if you wrap those with some proteins, they can then become mitotic spindles, and those fibers, those mitotic spindle fibers, will actually allow for the movement of these chromosomes, okay? So those are kinetic cores are actually the ones that are attached to the chromosomes, and then the non-kinetic cores are not attached. And so the non-kinetic cords actually help elongate the cell, make it bigger, whereas the, the kinetic cords actually move the chromosomes around. They move it into the middle during metaphase, and then they separate and route during anaphase. So basically just know that mitotic spindles themselves are super important to help move the chromosomes around okay. and to kind of squish the cell outwards. So here's a, the picture that's actually from the book itself, and you notice that, that they are attached to the centrioles, and so the kinetic cords are the ones actually attached to these chromosomes. And remember, the chromosomes are going to split along um, left to right, not top and bottom. So this plate isn't actually there, it's just an imaginary line, but that's where they all line up along during metaphase. So cytokinesis is where the cleavage or the, the cell... Um, the cell wall forms are known as the cell plate. And then also cytokinesis is where the cytoplasm itself will start to separate in between. So here's a, a plant cell. This right here, this darkened area, is the cell plate. And if you notice from this little diagram right here, the cell plate basically forms from the middle, and then it starts filling itself in, and then goes from the middle to the outside. Whereas on a, a plant cell, sorry, an animal cell, it actually cleaves in the middle. And so those basically pinch off. So you get daughter cells. So, this, I pulled this uh, picture from online. There's a lot of really good pictures online about um, mitosis cells and meiosis cells. You just do a, like an image search. You can find something like this. But you need to be able to take this and say, okay, well, like, let's do an easy one. Like, what uh, phase is this right here? Anaphase. Probably anaphase, right? Whereas, take uh, this one right here. What's that? Yeah, it's more metaphase because it's lined together. What uh, phase is this? Should it be what? 
prophase, good, because they're all condensed. Uh, what about these ones? These aren't really in mitosis, so which... No, well, yeah, I would say that's telophase. Well, what about these ones right here, though? That you can't even see the nucleus. Is it in mitosis? No, it's interphase. It's an interphase. So all these cells, remember I told you about 90% of the time, you're an interphase? So all these cells, it's really hard to see the nucleus. That is. That's another right there. That would be like a telophase. Um, this is a, a finalized telophase because you can truly see that this just got up anaphase. And then the, the, uh, the cell plate is starting to form. This is an early uh, prophase. Because, again, it's starting to condense down. <coughs> Um, so, like I said, take pictures like this and then go through and see if you can... A lot of the pictures are already been labeled for you, and so you can kind of be able to be able to recognize those. Okay. These are the pictures that are given to in the book. Um, the pictures on top are basically dyed forms of, the, of um, I believe, they're electron scanning microscopes, and so they'll dye specifically. So, like, the green dye is the mitotic spindles, the blue is the chromosomes, and then all that red is the cytoplasm, I believe. Okay. Um, so, which... Now, the book, I'm pretty sure, the book actually takes these two, and both of these are prophase. And what they call, they call this early prophase, and this being late prophase. Okay. But can you all see basically the same idea, though? That how the chromosomes are starting to condense, and then... And then they basically the chromosomes are condensed and all the nuclear membranes broken apart. So what phase is that? Meta, Meta and this is Anna. anaphase and this is telophase. Okay. So what's this one? Interphase. Okay. So notice that the, again the chromosomes are sorry the DNA itself is all separated out and then starts to condense and it's completely condensed and the nucleus is broken down. Okay, so this is what I was talking about, the, the controls. The, when it goes through these, these processes, it wants to make sure that everything is exactly the way it needs to be. So there's basically three checkpoints. It's through each of the, the, um, the phases in it, of interface. So the G1 phase is a checkpoint. So it goes through and says, hmm, am I big enough yet? And it says, uh, nope, you're not big enough yet. So then it says, okay, we'll go back and grow some more. So it'll go back and do one G1 again. But it says, yeah, you're big enough. It says, okay, well, then go ahead and start replicating, synthesizing this DNA. So it makes the DNA, and it starts doubling over the organelles, and then gets over to the G2 checkpoint. And the G2 point checkpoint says, okay, do you have all your DNA made right? Do you have all the organelles you need to make to be able Because remember, we're about to split apart, so we want to make sure we don't lose our partners. So it has to go through this G2. And it says, you know what? I don't have enough chloroplast yet. So we'll have to go back through the G2 and fix it again. Or it says, you know what? There was a mistake in this replication, so I'm going to go back to the S phase. And do it again. Okay? And it says, okay, well, we've got our organelles and our, our DNA looks good enough, so we're going to go through mitosis. Well, if it doesn't go and it doesn't, like, it doesn't do mitosis correctly, it will basically cause it to basically delete that cell and start over again. Or if it says, yeah, we're good, then it'll go through cytokinesis. So even though it, it goes, you know, pro, or interphase, prophase, um, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, if it's not good to go on cytokinesis, it won't do it. Okay? Unless you end up with things like um, cancers and, and those kind of ideas. Okay? So, and this density-dependent inhibition, I'm going to show it to you in the next picture. Um, but basically, cell controls are based on the size of the cell as well as the cycle. So it's not only these checkpoints, but if the cell isn't big enough, it won't get this G1 checkpoint. So here's what a cancer is. So remember what I said the, the density-dependent? Um, what density-dependent is this? If, let's say we're growing these, these uh, cheek cells, okay, and the cheek cells will grow in a medium, and they'll start to divide, they'll divide, and the, the moment that it becomes too dense, that it can't grow any more cells outwards, that's density dependence. It will stop the cell cycle, and those cells will just stay there, and they won't replicate. But the moment that you actually scrape some of these cells away, well, now there's a hole, so now it's not density, it's not fully filled yet, so it'll fill back in this hole. Okay, so that's normal skin cells. That's a good thing. But... Whenever you get things like cancer, cancer loses its density dependence. It becomes density independent, meaning that no matter how thick or how full it's getting with cells, it'll keep on growing. So one of the things you have to worry about whenever you get like, whenever they say, okay, look, watch for skin cancer, is you watch for the size and the shape of a, of a, a freckle or a mole. Okay? And if that mole becomes too thick 
or the mole becomes a very odd shape, it's because of this right here. The skin cells themselves are basically jumping on top of one another and growing and growing and growing and they're getting thicker and thicker. Or they're growing and growing and growing and they're not staying within a certain density. It basically just can kind of spread out to where, however it wants to. Um, and so that's how things like skin cells and those kind of things are, are formed. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 exactly. Um, and then on the cyclins and the protein kinases, you don't really have to know much about those. Just know that these are different ways that it can basically change the uh, the, the cell cycle itself. Um, where cyclins are basically, um, both of these are both, well, this is an enzyme, that's a protein. This cyclin will basically change which phase it's in or like which checkpoint it's going to go through. And then the protein kinase is actually uh, changing the phosphates within it. So to change how the, the proteins are lined up together. But basically, that's what you mostly need to know, is that these are all examples of what happens if the cell cycle doesn't follow, aside, follow suit. Okay, so an example of this is breast cancer. Okay, so again, skin cancer is kind of like where it's not density dependent. Breast cancer, what it does is the one of the single cells within the breast tissue will basically start to replicate. And it'll, go, it'll burn past all the checkpoints. And it'll be like, oh, I'm good. And it keeps on going. And it says, oh, I'm good. I'm keeping going. And so it just keeps on replicating these cells. And it just keeps on replicating these cells. So we end up with a, a large tumor like this. Well, the problem is that there's a lot of lymph nodes along the breast tissue. And so the, the, these cancer cells then get into the lymph nodes, and that's when it starts to come what's called metastasis or metastasize. And so it spreads. it spreads. Yeah, so if someone says, oh, their, their cancer is metastasized, it's a bad thing. Because what they know is that basically if a cancer cell gets into a lymph node, they don't know where it's going to go. Okay, so a lot of times it ends up in the lungs or it might end up um, in the, you know, uh, just random parts. A lot of times it ends up actually in the lymph nodes themselves. Um, and so you have to track it. And, um, and so if they can catch the tumor within the breast tissue or they catch the tumor within the, the lung tissue or they catch the tumor, wherever, what kind of cancer cell it is, and it doesn't spread, then you, you're normally pretty good. But if it gets to the point where we're starting to go into lymph ducts, and that lymph nodes is there to help uh, help control how much junk is in your body. If it spreads out to those, then it can't control nearly as well. So, and actually, here's a picture of a normal. Base, uh, I'm trying to remember. If this is an MRI. Yeah, this, I think this is an MRI photo of a normal breast tissue, and this is actually what happens whenever it gets breast cancer itself. Okay. So you notice that the the cancer cells themselves are basically uh, all stuck right in this area right here. Okay, and it's basically broken down all these tissues. The reason why you see all this white right here, this is good. This is all uh, lymph nodes and, and all the glandular tissue. It's basically beaten down on that glandular tissue and is now all um, cancer tissue. Okay. That's mitosis. Got it? Okay. Um, 